In this video, I'm doing a position analysis from the 2023 Ultimate Backgammon Championships final between Sandra Lyloff and Masayuki Mochizuki. Mochi, thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoy this video. Please like and subscribe and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Please let me know what you think in the comments below and what you'd like to see in future videos so I can work on that. Thank you to Mark Olson and the Backgammon Galaxy team for allowing me to use this position in the video. My book, Backgammon, Backgame Strategies, is available. There's a link in the description to where you can get it. And if you're interested in lessons, please contact me via email. My email address is in the description. This is the position that I'm going to be analyzing in this video. They were playing on the beautiful Backgammon Galaxy Void board with the new Casio inlay. The inlays can be changed, and they're using the bright orange and light blue checkers. So this is the position. It's the first game of a seven point match. So it's zero, zero to seven or seven away, seven away. Sander is playing the orange checkers at the bottom and Mochi is playing the blue checkers at the top. Mochi owns a two cube and Sander has a five, three to play. So think about how you would play the five, three. Pause the video. Uh, Think about it, see how you would play, and we'll look at the analysis in a moment. In, a, in the meanwhile, there is a link in the description to the exact moment of this play so you can see what happened uh, in the actual match. Okay, so when you look at this position, you can see with the 5-3, Orange can point on head and attack, and that's especially valuable uh, having already sent the cube because now he can win four points uh, uh, with a gammon, and that's very valuable in a seven-point match. However, it turns out that this is the answer. The best play is just safely covering with 10-2. to two like so, which results in this position. Pointing on head like this, which results in this position, is actually a blunder. So let's look at why, okay? When you look at this up close, you see that after 10-2, you win more games, but you, you win fewer gammons. You win many more gammons when you point on head. So you win uh, nearly 7% more gammons. However, you lose more than 10% gammons. So that trade-off is not worth it. So why do you lose more gammons? Well, you win more gammons, obviously, because you put a checker on the bar and there's the possibility of dancing. But you lose more gammons because if blue comes in and hits, then you're, you're up against a four-point board and you can get into some big trouble. Um, or if blue comes in without hitting, orange still has four blots to consolidate. So you've got to consider that. So this is what it looks like after you make the point on head play, eight, three, five, three. Orange has four blots scattered around the board. There are 18 hitting rolls for blue from the bar. 6-4 hits here. 6-2 hits twice. The ones that are underlined hits, hit twice. 5-2 hits here. Double four hits here. 4-2 hits here. 3-2 hits here. 4-1 comes in with the four and hits with the one. 2-1 two, one hits twice, and so does double one. The double hitting rolls are really bad. Additionally, Look at the relative board strength. The relative board strength is the number of inner board points you have made as compared to your opponent. So in this case, Orange has a three-point board because he has a six-point, the five-point, and the three-point. Um, so when you are on the bar against the three-point board with one checker on the bar, there are nine rolls that fail to enter, nine dancing rolls. On the other hand, 
uh, blue has a four point board because blue has his five, four, three, and two. And when you have one checker on the bar against a four point board, there are 16 dancing numbers, 16 rolls that fail to enter. So 16 is more than nine. So when you're in a hitting exchange, the person with the stronger board uh, is a favorite. OK, so you have to consider that, especially when you have blots all over the place. These are the big swing rolls. So you see two, one and six, two are the big rolls, uh, big swings um, that are that are big in favor of not hitting, because if you do hit, those will hit twice and you'll be on the bar with two checkers on the bar against the four point board. Let's take a look. Once you make the safe play, if blue rolls a 2-1, it's played like this, resulting in this position. So now uh, all you have to do is just bring this checker home, and you're ahead in the race, and things are looking good. On the other hand, if you point on head and then blue rolls a 2-1, it's played like this, coming in from the bar with hitting and playing 16-15, to 15, hitting a second checker, resulting in this position. Now... You have two checkers on the bar against the four-point board, and blue is able to hit with sixes um, and come out and bring builders down, and you're in a lot of trouble here. And then, if you make the safe play with six-two, with uh, if you make the safe play by making the two-point, and then blue rolls a six-two, it's played like this, resulting in this position. Uh, it's not great, but at least you can just bring this checker home and you have decent chances. However, if you point on head and then blue rolls a 6-2, you're in really bad shape because blue comes in with the two hitting and then continues with the six hitting a second checker, resulting in this position. Now you have two checkers on the bar against the four point board and you can be hit with 20 numbers with ones and twos if you fail to enter. Um, or uh, blue can bring builders down trying to attack this other blot and complete a five-point board. Now, let's go back to the original position and modify it to make some variance to see what happens when we change the position. Um, here you see it's a blunder to point on head, but if you move one spare from the six-point to the eight-point like this, now, if you point on head, you're not leaving a blot on the eight point. So if you use these two checkers to make the three point, there's only one blot here and a second blot and a third blot. So that only leaves three blots. So that's much stronger. And now pointing on head becomes correct. So you have to think about how many blots you leave. Now let's look at what happens when the two point is made. When the two point is made, now you make the three point with a point on head roll, eight, three, five, three, without leaving a blot on the board, and there's only three blots left, and it makes a four point board. So that makes a huge difference. Number one, you're not leaving a blot on the board. Number two, there are only three blots. Number three, there's a four point board rather than a three point board. So that makes a big difference. The relative board strength, whether you have a blot on the board and the overall blot count. Now look what happens when you make a blot in the opponent's board. Now the two plays are close. So we just moved one checker from uh, blue's two point to the three point, leaving a blot here. So now in the event of a hitting exchange, blue only has a three point board with a blot on the board. And now making the point on head uh, is a little bit better, despite the fact that it does leave a blot on the board and leaves four blots because Blue also has a blot on the board. Both players have a three-point board. Uh, and um, Orange's board is actually better because the six-point is open on Blue's board. So if Orange enters with a six, Blue has no priming value. However, if uh, Blue enters with a four or a one, um, he's stuck behind a prime. So the tips for this position is anytime you're making a hitting play or even a non-hitting play, look at how many blots you leave. You don't want to leave too many blots because 
you may be hit twice or you may be hit once um, and then be on the bar and fail to come in and then be hit again later or you may not be hit at all but then be hit later so you have a lot to consolidate when you leave too many blots you want to identify the relative board strength. So how many points do you have in your board and how many points your opponent has in the in their board? That's really important in the event of a potential hitting exchange or a blot hitting contest. When you have a blot in your board, that's a big liability when hitting a checker because they have a direct shot from the bar. But if there's not a blot in your board, then it's not as big a liability. However, still having other blots can be a liability depending on many other factors. So we saw when blue had a blot in the board, that became a liability. So making the three point became stronger. Whenever you leave shots, you want to count how many return shots the opponent has. In this case, after pointing on head, half the numbers hit back and some of the numbers hit twice. So that's really bad. Um, and if you want to look into it further, you make some variance, you modify the position to see how things change. So we saw some variance where we move the spare, spare checker from the six point to the eight point, and that way you don't leave a fourth blot on the eight point. So that made a difference, making the th making the two point also made a difference because you're not leaving a blot on the board, you're making a stronger board, and you're only leaving three blots and changing the opponent's uh, home board to a three-point board and a blot on the board will affect all of these things. So always consider all of these things whenever you're looking at a play that hits or even doesn't hit. So that was the position analysis from the 2023 Ultimate Backgammon Championships Finals between Sandra Lyloff and Mochi Masayuki Mochizuki. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Please let me know what you think in the comments below and what you'd like to see in future videos so I can work on that. Thank you again to Mark Olson and the Backgammon Galaxy team for allowing me to use this position in the video. My book, Backgammon Backgame Strategies, is available. There's a link in the description to where you can get it. And if you're interested in lessons, please contact me via email. My email address is in the description. I look forward to seeing you in future videos. And until then, keep rolling your dice.